Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Joyne Loves, and I'm back with another video. Um, <clears throat> this video was requested by several people on my YouTube channel. Um, so this story is going to be a roller coaster of emotions for me. It's a video that I kind of did not want to make, um, but I'm going to make it. Um, so this is the story on how I met, um, my deceased fiance, um, and this is a story of what happened to him as well. So grab your popcorn, your candy your slushies I have my iced coffee in my cup that my friend made I will have her Instagram link in the description box if you guys want to purchase one um so okay sorry y'all I'm back um so let's go back to 2006 about June of 2006 um yeah, June of 2006. Um, I had just found out that I was pregnant and I was in a bad relationship. I'm a very toxic, um, a very toxic, a very abusive verbally and somewhat physical um, abuse and um i had cut ties with the relationship part but because i already had one child i was trying to keep the friendship going with my daughter natlin's dad so um i had this is back when there was myspace so if you guys are around my age you would know what myspace is so <clears throat> I was on MySpace and this guy, um, his screen name was Superman. I don't remember the numbers, but it was like Superman something. And um, he like was trying to get at me or whatever, but I was already going through some stuff and I was pregnant and you know, I kept in contact with my best friend. Um, through MySpace and some other friends through MySpace and I was just not on there looking for anything in particular so when so he just like kept being like like kept coming at me for like a week two weeks or something like that so I was like well let me you know call him whatever so I called him and we instantly like connected like we were like calling each other texting each other all the time um i kind of like i spoke to his mother a lot spoke to his little brother a lot and this was like back in the day when i used to like i used to be into guys that had a grill and had dreads if you had both you had me hooked um, Otis was, um, he didn't have hair, but he had a grill and he was caramel skin. I loved me caramel skin, to, skin tone men back then. Okay. So, um, I was like, okay. So he was just like, even though he was a year younger than me, he was just like, he always cared about my feelings like he just was like that dude like and and for him to be that young because we were about 19 years old so he was like 18 i was 19 he was turning um 19 soon and so uh we talked every day we we hung out we like the love was there the love was all there you guys and Otis asked me probably about, because we didn't start dating until like July. So he asked me about 
the end of July, the beginning of August to, um, like, well, he didn't ask me, but he like, he didn't really ask, but he was like, you're going to marry me type that this time he didn't, he didn't ask me. He just like kind of basically told me like, you're going to marry me. And so I'm like, boy, you crazy. Like we don't have no place to live. Like we're, you know, we're living, we're still living at home with our moms. Like I'm pregnant with another baby. And he was fine. Cause he was just like, those are my kids. You know what I'm saying? At the time, my oldest daughter's dad wasn't in her life at all. And she was one years old. And, um, actually she was turning one. So she wasn't even one yet. And, um, I was like, okay, whatever. And, um, no, she, I think she was one. I don't even remember y'all, but anyway, anyway, she was born in 2005. So yeah, she was turning one. So she was turning one in August and he was like, those are my kids. Like them is my babies. Like I'm going to be there when, when the baby is born, you know, whatever. He was like trying to help me pick her name and stuff like that. Like he literally down to like, he literally helped me name her because I didn't know what I wanted to name Nene. And he was throwing all types of names out and stuff like that. And, um, Finally, my brother-in-law said something, and that's how Nene got her name, Natlin. And I told him, I said, what do you think about Natlin? He was like, that's cute, that's beautiful, like it's unique kind of. And I'm like, okay. And so, um, anyway, so time goes on, and about September, okay, so Otis used to be, like, he was already, like, he was like a troublemaker like he had been to juvenile hall he had already had a strike by the time he was 18 so he basically was like trying to change his like turn his life around like he had a job he was taking care of his you know taking care of his mom like helping her out with the household he had a little brother he was taking care of him you know when his mom wanted to go out or whatever um he had the most beautiful like golden pit bulls like oh my gosh those pit bulls were so beautiful um and so he was trying to turn his life around he wasn't partying anymore he wasn't like you know he was just like i'm a family man like if i'm gonna you know if i'm gonna be your man if i'm gonna be your husband i need to you know live my life better i need to provide you know this that, and the third he was old school thinking like the man is supposed to provide like the woman's supposed to stay at home blah 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 take care of home and so he went out got a job and he was supposed he had a football scholarship um to play um football but what had happened was is he tore the ligament in his knee or something like that and he couldn't play anymore so he didn't he lost that scholarship and um in september he got word that he was going to have his knee replacement and he was all excited because he was like, finally, I'll be able to get to run. I'll be able to, you know, um, not walk with such of a limp. And he just, he was so excited that he was going to be able to walk without a cane and that he was going to be able to get some type of his life back because he lived in constant pain in his knee. So, you know, I pumped him up. I'm like, yeah, you can do everything. You know, you can do whatever you want to do now. You know what I'm saying? If you, because he wanted to be a carpenter and he wanted to, you know, build buildings and all that stuff. And I was like, you're going to be able to do that. And he couldn't get construction jobs because, and he loves doing construction. Like he used to build a lot of things. And I'm like, man, now you can do, you know, now you can get a construction job. You could do almost anything that you want to do, you know, and he was so juiced about it. And uh, so he got his surgery, and I remember just praying, praying, praying. Sorry for the knocking at Smart Charm. He was praying, praying, praying. I was praying, praying, praying for him during his surgery, and I didn't hear from him for like two days because of the medication and stuff like that. And, um, uh, and then I finally heard from him. I'm recording. 
So I finally heard from him and he was like, you know, I'm getting ready to go home. I'm in a lot of pain. He was like, it hurts so bad. He was like, but I know the outcome is better. You know, this, that, and the third. And so about October, November, probably like the beginning of November, the end of October, he was able to like, not fully like bend his knee, but bend it enough to where he can, um, where he can start going upstairs and, and doing other things. And, um, he was so excited and he started going out with his friends again and you know he was still checking in with his mom and he always told his mom he loved him and everything like that so I'm getting closer and closer to my due date and I'm like I'm like Otis like I never called him um Superman I never called him Superman that was his nickname Superman and um I was getting closer and I said Sup I said Otis, I said, you know, I'm getting close. Like, December's coming up. Like, we need to figure out what we're going to do, you know? And he was like, my mom said that she'll help us get a place, this, that, and the third. Um, you know, we both need to start stacking money so we can, you know, get this place, whatever, be able to afford it on our own. And I'm like, okay. So, I started looking for places and whatnot. And me and Otis never really argued. Like, we had disagreements, but never like a full blown like argument to where we didn't talk and we were pissed off at each other. We always said we would never go to bed angry at each other. We would never get off the phone until, you know, we both apologized and we rectified the situation. So I, so, um, December comes around. And, you know, we um, he had looked at some places, and he was getting a car. He looked at a car, and um, he was like, ooh, I found this car. Let me send you pictures, this, that, and the third. And so he had sent me pictures and whatnot. And I was like, well, yeah, that's good, you know, for now, you know what I'm saying. So we did that. We got the car or whatever. And, well, he bought the car. And then something was wrong with it. I guess it was like a lemon. So he had to take it back, got his money back. And he was like, forget it. Like, we'll find something. I'm not going to rush into it. Yada, yada, yada. So we're getting closer to my due date. Now, my due date wasn't until January 10th. Nene came. My sister says Nene came early. I don't think, I mean, um, Nene came late. I don't think... Nene came late. I think she came early because I had an appointment and they told me that I was already three centimeters dilated. So I had to go get um, induced. So I have been calling Otis and 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 texting him and texting him and texting him. And then finally he answers. He was like, what's up? What's going on? And I'm like, I'm on my way to the hospital. He was like, what hospital? I told him my hospital. I'll try to get there as soon as I can. I'm like, okay. And he was like, um, is old dude there? And I was like, yeah, he's he's supposed to, he's he like brought me up here, whatever. And he was like, well, um, do you want me to wait? Or do you want me to come up there anyway? And I was like, well, it's really up to you. So he was like, well, I'm going to wait. He was like, but I'm going to be on my way. He was like, I'm going to just stay at my cousin's house out there. And I said, okay. So I, Otis missed everything. Otis missed the birth. Otis missed, um, he didn't come up there to see me. He wasn't answering my phone calls. And I'm like, what the hell is going on, you know? And so he was like, man, I'm sorry I got locked up, you know, for like uh, the last like two days. Nene was born on the 20, Nene was born on the 28th. And I talked to him like the 20, no, I talked to him on the 30th, on the 30th of December. And, um. But he got it, and um, I was like, well, I'm at the hospital, I'm getting ready. I'm at the hospital. I'm getting ready to um, leave. Like, I'll call you when I get home. Like, my phone isn't, like, my phone won't be on. I have to pay it tomorrow. 
And he was like, oh, you just with that nigga. And we got into a big old argument. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, nigga, I'm like in the whole like hospital. Like, what do you mean? And we just got into a big old stupid ass argument. <sighs> and I was just like, I'm not lying to you. Like, I'll call you when I get to to my mom's house. Like, you know, my family is going to want to see the baby. But I'll call you as soon as I can. So... He was like, man, F that. I knew this shit was going to happen. I loved you. I was ready to marry you and all this other stuff. And I'm like, dude, like, you can still do all that. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm not doing nothing with him. Like, he's dropping me off at my, at my house and I'm going to go in the house. So I called him. I called him that day when I got home because I got home, like, later on in the morning, like 11 o'clock in the morning. I got home at 11 o'clock, and I was calling him, and he wouldn't answer the phone. So I'm like, okay, that's weird. Like, even if he was upset, he would have answered my phone call. And so now I'm getting into the last time he was, I not the last time that I got to hear his voice, but the last time he said anything to me. Um, so he finally calls me back the same day and he's like, I'm gonna call you back. He was like, I'm trying to handle some business. He was like, I'm gonna try to, he was like, I'm trying to come out there to see you and the baby. And I'm like, okay. So December 31st comes, I don't hear anything and I'm calling and I'm calling and I'm calling and I'm calling and I'm calling. And I'm like, this isn't like him. Like, he don't, like, his phone bill's already paid, so I don't know why he's not answering. I called the house, and his mom was like, oh, he's out with somebody, with his friends or whatever. How's the babies? And I was like, they're doing good. She was like, can you send me pictures? And I said, yeah. And I said, tell, tell Batman, not, I tell, I said, tell Superman, not Batman, tell Superman to call me and she was like I'll tell that Negro to call you she was like what the hell keep you doing I said I don't know and she was like okay she was like well send me the pictures blah 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 I'm like okay and so New Year's uh, New Year's Eve comes it's New Year's Eve the New Year's Day the second January 2nd, I called, and I called, and I called all day, all night, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, like, just give me time, like, I'm coming, like, I promise I'm coming, I'm like, okay, he was like, I love you, and I said, I love you too, and then I guess he heard some stuff in the background, then we started arguing again. And I'm like, it's just the TV, like, you're tripping, like, what's wrong with you? Have you been drinking? Like, have you been smoking? Like, what? What the fuck? I was like, who is it? Like, are you with another female? Like, you've been blowing me off? You ain't been answering my phone call. Man, it ain't nothing like that. Why you gotta say that? Like, I said I'm fucking coming. Like, fuck, this shit is irritating. You just had a whole baby. And then it's like he flipped. I don't know what his problem was. But I'm coming. I'm on my way. And I'm like, okay, whatever. So, I must have been asleep. I don't even remember. I must have been asleep because all I know, because I woke up and it was like, I got kicked in like my stomach and I was just like, the fuck? And I'm like, what the heck is going on? And I didn't know that something was wrong until my phone rang. My mom had paid my bill. So my phone was back on. And I'm like, what the heck? And I answer it and it's him. And I'm like, what's up? Are you here? Like, what the heck is going on? And like, I hear, like, I hear wind I hear yelling I hear screaming and I'm like what the heck is going on Otis like he can't hear me 
but I can hear him. And he's like, um, he's like, man, let me out this fucking car. Let me out the fucking car. I got a family. I got a wife and kids. Nigga, please. Like, man, please let me out this fucking car. Like, I ain't trying to go down for this shit. Like, and I'm like, what the hell? What is going on? I'm like, are you all right? Are you okay? Ah! Seriously, y'all. I'm like, what is wrong? I was like, are you okay? Like, are you in a, what happened? Like, what was that noise? Y'all don't hear nothing. I just hear, like, just cars, just, like, screeching cars, like, coming to a halt. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I don't hear anything but noise. Like, just, like sounds of cars just like like speeding by I hear car brakes I hear now what I know was now I know now what it was it was a uh, the windshield being broke I keep calling the phone. It's not like I hang up. So if you know with Metro, if you hang up, it hangs up both of y'all. So I hang up and I call back 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 and I'm crying because I'm like, what the fuck was that noise? What is going on? Like, oh my God, like in my stuff, like my gut, like I couldn't breathe because I already knew what was like, what happened? I already knew in my mind, like something bad happened. I knew something was off and I knew something was wrong and I called for like three days. I called for three days and I left voicemails, voice messages every day. Every day I left a voicemail. Hold this, this is Velvet, give me a call. Superman is Velvet, give me a call. Are you okay? Is everything all right? Like, I ain't heard from you in three days. Like, this isn't like you. Like, what the F are you doing? Are you with somebody? Like... All that craziness came, and y'all. <coughs> <coughs> I could like I kept calling, but after a while, I made the the mailbox full. I made the mailbox full, so I couldn't leave the voicemail. And I was calling his mom's house, and nobody answered the phone. January 7th. I will never forget this day. January 7th. 2007. I get a phone call. Is this velvet? I say yeah. This is velvet. She goes. Hey, this is oh, this is mom. I said, Hey, how you doing? She was like, Um, she said, I'm good, but I'm not good. And I said, Okay, I said, Um, how is Otis? I said, Is he all right? Is everything okay? And when I tell you at this point in my life, like it felt like my life was in slow motion, she said. Yes and no. And I said, what do you mean yes and no? She said, Otis died three days ago. I said, what? She said, Otis died. And I said, what do you mean he died? I said, I just was, I just heard him. Like, he just called me. She said, She said, Otis died. He was in a, in a car accident. And I said, 
said, I don't understand. I said, I don't, I said, no, I don't believe it. I said, if you don't want to be with me, just, just tell me that. She said, it's not that. She said, Otis died in a car accident. He was thrown out the window. She said, the guy that Otis had just met was, um, the guy that Otis had just met was, um, had escaped county jail. And that he had stolen a vehicle, became friends with Otis. And the night that I heard, what I heard was because, what I heard, what I heard was because Otis was trying to get out of the vehicle on the road, on the, on the highway. Because the dude was on a high speed chase with the police and he was wanted and he was a three striker and he knew if he got caught that he would be going to jail for life. She said Otis was trying to get out the vehicle. I said, I heard all that. I said, but I didn't know that it was that bad. She said, I pulled the plug on Otis three days ago. She said he was a mushroom and it was nothing that they can do. She said, I tried to call. I tried to call so you could say goodbye. She said, but I didn't have your phone number. Your phone number didn't come up on my caller ID anymore. And I tried to call the day that I wanted to pull the plug because he was in a mushroom state. There was nothing they could do for him. She said he didn't look like himself. And at that moment, I, re I remember just... I had Nene in my hand. I had Nene in my hand. And I remember walking down to my niece's room. And I handed her my baby. And she said, what's wrong with you? She said, why you look like that? And I was just like, you know. I said, watch her real quick. And I said, when's the funeral? She said, we're not having one. We're having a memorial. She said, but you can go on this. It was this one site that you, that you can do like a virtual, um, a virtual, um, like you could sign like this thing. And it was like, I guess like virtual signing book or something like that. Um, and people use them for like funerals and weddings and all that stuff. And she was like, this is the site. She was like, uh, I just need your address so I can send you an obituary. And I'm like, okay. I never got the obituary, y'all. Never got the obituary. I did sign this thing. And, um... I never properly got to say goodbye. So that's why I'm so emotional because even though it's been almost 14 years, I'm not completely healed from that. The one person that I loved was taken from me at 20 years old. 20 years old. He didn't even get to live his life, y'all. He didn't get to live his life. He didn't get to do the things that he wanted to do. He didn't get to run track. He didn't get to play football again. He didn't get to he didn't get to do any of that. He didn't get to do any of it. And I'm still hurt because I want to ask that motherfucker why.
because of your evilness and your evil ways, you took somebody's life. And you grown as hell. You lived yours. You're living yours. You still get to sit there and breathe. He can't breathe. He's cremated. Never got to get married. Never got to have kids of his own. That's what I want to ask that bastard. Why? Why, when he was screaming on that phone, let me out. Just slow down enough to where I could jump out. I'll do my time. I have a family. I have a wife and children. I want to know why you didn't let that person out. Why you didn't let him out. Why did you feel like it was okay for you to tell somebody. You're not getting out. We in this together. How? You only met this man four days before he died. You walked up and picked him picked him up off the side of the street. You used people that he knew to get close to him. To I know I've been ugly crying on here. Um but I think this story time was requested by <clears throat> This story time was requested by um Sierra Janae. Um This, again, this is a story that I never wanted to tell. How I'm getting through it, I don't know. Almost 14 years of heartbreak. I've loved and I lost between those 14 years. I've been hurt recently. We all know that. feels like he don't want me to love nobody. He doesn't want me to let him go, y'all. Because every time I start to love, it backfires. Every single time. I don't think he wants me to fully let him go. And I got to. I got to. Certain things happen and I'm just like, really? <laughs> Like, y'all probably think I'm crazy, but I just be like, really? Like, sometimes I'll just, like, see something. You know what I'm saying? I'll just be like. <sighs> My heart is crushed. I keep trying to put the pieces together. And every time I get to the last piece, it's like an explosion again. And I'm brokenhearted again. I know he's here with me. I know that I can feel it. If I could say anything to him, it would be that I love you. And I always will. And that um, I'm sorry that things turned out the way that they did. I'm sorry that you didn't get to live your life. You didn't get to do any of the things that you wanted to do that you were so excited about. I'm so, so sorry. I'm sorry that Selfish bastard took your freaking life. And I hope that 
you're up there with your grandmother. I hope you're taking care of her. And I hope that um, you never stopped loving me. And continue to watch over me. <laughs> and send away all the bad seeds <laughs> that come into my life. And thank you for the, um, the memories that I did have with you. And thank you for loving me when I didn't love myself and believing in me. But um, with that being said, y'all, I'm going to get off here because yeah, I'm going to get off here. And uh, I'm sorry that this premiere is long, you guys. Sorry. Um, I just had to tell my story, but um, I do want to say that if you guys have ever went through something like this, I'm sorry. I know how you feel. I can relate to you. I'm getting, I'm getting over it one day at a time. Not over it, but I'm getting, I'm able to breathe a little bit more. I'm able to love just a little bit more. It's not easy at all. And he would think in 14 years I'll be okay and I'll be able to do a normal story time about it. But I'm not. I'm still grieving. Because the hardest thing to do is to grieve for somebody that you can never say goodbye to. I never got to say goodbye to him. Never. And that day rose in my mind every single day day some days are better than others some days are worse than others but I get through it I muscle through it somehow and I know in my mind one day I'll be able to tell the story again and not cry not one time and just smile knowing that he lived a full life that he lived and did what he was supposed to do and that he gave he gave me a little bit of happiness but that time's not right now. Hopefully soon. <laughs> but, um, y'all, keep praying for me. And, um, again, thank you guys for watching this premiere. I'm so sorry it's so long. But I didn't want to do a part two. <laughs> so, if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Turn on your bell and um, share it and like it up. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.